Okay, so uh, we'll discuss uh, HTML. So uh, HTML is hypertext markup language. So it is used to uh, program web pages. Uh, you can uh, use a view page source to uh, to see the uh, source of the page you're viewing. Uh, HTML uh, tags are highlighted in purple, and you have different colors for uh, different fields. So this is a source HTML document. Uh, for the web page you're viewing. So this is the uh, page. So tags. So tags tell the web browser, that is the uh, uh, Firefox or Internet Explorer, which uh, part of the file or text or images which are uh, programming code. So they come in pairs. When one uh, surrounded by angular brackets, the other with the angular brackets plus a forward slash. So the beginning tag uh, is title. The ending tag includes a slash after the first bracket. So the the uh, the thing in between is the uh, uh, text. So, uh, HTML, HTML is not case sensitive, so you can uh, use lower or upper cases, it wouldn't matter to the web browser, but uh, the convention is to have all capital letters for HTML tags. Uh, they're easier to see if they're, if they're in all caps. But it is by no means a requirement. Some people like to use lower case letters, that's fine too. Uh, so you, you should uh, begin and end web document to tell the browser to read in as HTML document with the HTML, HTML tag. So everything should be enclosed within these two tags, HTML uh, begin and end. So head tag indicates the heading of the document. Uh, body tag indicates the body. So the uh, the sequence should be HTML at the very uh, outer, uh, as the outer surrounding tag with a head uh, and followed by a body. So BR is a brick, line brick tag. So if you have a BR, it uh, inserts a new line in the web page. So in the head section, uh, You uh, you use uh, you place a title for the uh, page. The title is uh, displayed at the uh, uh, at the header of the document. So <coughs> so. Uh,
So the, uh, the HTML file typically ends with HTML. You can also type in HTM. Uh, in fact, any stuff that is okay, just the convention is to have HTML or HTM. Uh, in the old days, uh, they used to have this uh, limitation that uh, the largest uh, file name is 8 by 3, that is 8 characters before the dot and 3 letters after the dot. Uh, so that's for an old uh, DOS uh, limitation, but now the latest windows remove that limitation. So in the old days you may see HTM because uh, the operating system does not, does not allow you to have HTML after the dot, but nowadays you can have HTML. So uh, let's look at uh, this HTML document. Remember to make it uh, other readable. So, uh, so this is the uh, so this is the uh, document. You have HTML tags surrounding everything. You have a body which is empty. You have a head. Within the head, you have a title, VNet's homepage. So, when you display the page, the VNet's homepage is on the upper left corner on the top of the uh, Firefox browser. So that's the uh, head of the page. And also it's on, on the tab uh, name. So if you're using tab browsing, VNet's homepage. And also you have a meta. Uh, this means that the meta tag uh, indicates uh, what editor you use to generate the web page because you can edit a page either with a, uh, a text uh, editor uh, like a notepad or, uh, or on Unix you can use the UI or you can use Microsoft Word or front page. To, uh, it's a within week editor uh, that is, if you use Word to edit a document, you can actually a document. You don't have to insert a text manually. You can just uh, change the font and insert a list or anything. Uh, just like when you're editing a Word document, and uh, when you save that HTML, the Word will insert the appropriate text for you. Uh, so it's much easier uh, for to edit the uh, HTML document with a uh, word. So if you use the word, when you save the document, it will insert the meta tag with content equal Microsoft Word 97 or with the latest version of Word, uh, indicating which editor you use to generate this HTML document. The body section, uh, everything else uh, goes into the body. So in the head, you, you have a, uh, a title, and in the body, you uh, add a, uh, a T stand for paragraph. So now the body is empty. You add. A paragraph, so T, uh, stands for a paragraph, uh, and align center means that you align this uh, text 
in the middle of the page. So now the page looks like a business homepage. So you have one line only uh, center. So uh, notice that the first key doesn't have an end tag. So it's, I think uh, it doesn't matter if you uh, omit the, uh, the, the enclosing uh, bracket. No, I think it does matter. Yeah, I guess T is uh, different from uh, from those other tags. So in the first uh, T, you are, you don't need the uh, second angular bracket. In the, in the last T, you need both brackets. So, oh, sorry. I, th I think I said something wrong. So uh, first T, uh, they have a line and parameter, right? So if you had a, another bracket here, you have two uh, enclosing brackets, right? So if you didn't have the align parameters, you should have T uh, closing bracket. So, okay, so, so that's that. Color, you can uh, change the background color uh, to black. And then, because the text is also black, then you can see nothing on the page. You should change the text color to white. So, and change the font to Arial. And make the a title bold. So, uh, this is done all with uh, these lines. So, let's do this. So, replace the body part. So, so now what happens, uh, in the body you see background color equals black, uh, text equals white, it means white text on the black background, and uh, say a line center, bold, make the text uh, bold, font size is 8, place is Arial, uh, and uh, Closing a font and closing bold. So as a result, you see white text, black background, and uh, aerial uh, font. The so fourth paragraph uh, to introduce Ina. So uh, headings and paragraphs. So H H one indicates a level one heading, uh, and followed by a paragraph. Here we don't have the uh, parameter. Align, so therefore this thing by default is left aligned, not uh, center aligned. And uh, next uh, heading and paragraph, different activities and uh, my favorite activities are, etc. So H1 is the first level heading, H2 is second level heading. So the second level heading is the smaller in terms of font than the first level heading. And, uh, and so on. I think you have totally uh, three levels of heading defined in HTML. So the page looks like this. First level heading, my bio, followed by a paragraph. Hi, I'm Nina, and so on. Second, uh, the second is also a first level heading and uh, paragraph. So you can add hyperlinks uh, to uh, other websites. So this is what the page looks like. 
the SPCA thanked me and put me up for adoption. For two years, I've been living with a family at XPUST. So if you click on the web page, you get a uh, go to the hyperlink. So the uh, the syntax is a uh, surrounding a with href parameter. Href is hyperlink uh, hypertext reference with HTTP uh, uh, web address, followed by the name for the uh, link. So remember, don't forget the HTTP in front of it. Otherwise, you won't uh, go to the web page. Uh, so and another web link, HTTP www.ust.hk, So notice that the uh, tags are case insensitive. So the first A is a small case A. Next A is uppercase A. It don't matter. You can use upper or lower cases. So you can brighten the links with uh, link color is line. Uh, V-link, uh, that is the visited link, uh, if the link has been visited already, you color it red, indicating you have uh, followed the link already. A link means active link. So if a link is being followed, that is you are clicking it, and uh, it, it turns yellow instantaneously. Uh, so the page now the SPCA is uh, now red because I clicked on it uh, a few minutes ago. And HQSC is uh, line, which is uh, greenish color, uh, because you said link equals uh, line. Link color is line. If you visit it, uh, it turns orange uh, moment, mo uh, briefly and go to the link. Afterwards, it turns red because now it been, has been visited. So I said, we said V link is red, visited links are called red, A link, active link is yellow. So if you say if you click on SPCA, you notice that it turns yellow briefly and before it goes to uh, the link. So that's active link color. You can move the uh, bio and activities to subpages and connect them with links. Uh, this is to uh, to keep your uh, main HTML document small. Uh, if you happen to have uh, large uh, subpages, you place them in separate HTML files uh, to. Uh, to make the uh, main, just like the subroutine calls, you make, make, keep the main program simple. Uh, if you put the uh, subpage files in the same directory, uh, it, it's easy, just refer to the file with by name. But if you place it in the, another directory, you should, you should specify the full URL or the pass name. So, uh, Relative pass name, you use dot dot to indicate uh, the upper level directory. And uh, just like we do CD uh, in Unix, you can, you can uh, you follow the same conventions to specify the pass name. So here, uh, we, uh, we say a href equals uh, htm with no pass name, only a file name. This indicates that this file should be in the same directory as this uh, main HTML document. Otherwise, it won't find the file. And you say uh, strong, uh, strong has the same effect as bold uh, to emphasize uh, this bio, this, uh, this uh, word, and font 
size equals plus one, indicating that it should be a one size, one point larger than the regular size. Uh, plus one indicates one point uh, larger. Uh, so, uh, and uh, favor activities is also one point larger. So here's the uh, page. You have a bio, which is a, a, a bold and large text pointing to a uh, HTML document. If you click on it, it's the bio. Notice that it is a separate file is vinabio.htm. This file should be in the same directory as the uh, as the Vina web, uh, the main HTML document. You notice that they're in the same directory because you can see it from the uh, from the web address. They're both under uh, dg111 node HTML directory, just with different file names. Favorite activities is activities.htm documents within the HTML directory. So you place a photo uh, by uh, this image command uh, image source equals uh, the, the uh, the uh, JPEG file name. So again, you see this is only a file name here, not a pass name. Therefore, this JPEG file must be in the same directory as the main HTML document. So this photo is centered uh, because you have a center tag around the, uh, the image file. So you can also uh, uh, insert a rainbow symbol. You can uh, grab this uh, image file from the web. So suppose you have you see a web page with an uh, image file you like. You just uh, right click and save the image as and save the image in the same directory uh, with the uh, home page and link to it. So so this is the animated GIF. Uh, GIF is a format uh, uh, of image file that uh, sometimes you can do animations with it. So uh, now you include the uh, rainbow.gif. You specify the height as uh, 20 pixels. Width is 100%, indicating that it should, it should span the entire width of the browser. So if you resize the browser, uh, no matter how large the browser is, this uh, this image, this GIF image, should span the entire width. Okay, add a sound. Uh, Adding a sound is the same, uh, have the same syntax as adding a hyperlink. href equals uh, a uh, sound file. Wave is a type of sound file. So, uh, and different browsers will 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 use a uh, a sound player to play it. So it depends on. You're setting in the browser. You can uh, specify what player you use to play the sound file. So uh, I think it is uh, self introduction. So in this browser, it uses the uh, QuickTime player. You can also configure the Windows Media Player to play it. Something, but uh, somehow it's not coming out anyway. So, page layout, we want to arrange the layout of the page. 
to something like this. Go to on the upper left corner, have a background image. Welcome to Venus homepage. You have the IO and data activities on the right, etc. So first comment. Comment in, in uh, HTML is this. You use, uh, use this guy to indicate start of the comment, and this to indicate end of the comment. Uh, it's a little bit uh, long compared to, uh, say, Perl. In Perl, you use pound, but here you use these two tags. So comment at the title, you do, uh, you surround this uh, part you want to remove with these two tabs. So, and uh, you add a background image. Uh, by by adding a uh, attribute background equals uh, image file name in the body within the body uh, uh, along with the other attribute of the body like background color text is text color link color etc. You use background equals image file name. So now you get this background with the uh, image file. Uh, welcome to Venus homepage. Uh, this is the uh, image uh, diff that you uh, created earlier, uh, serving as the background of the entire page. Venus title dot diff. Now the photo overlap the word art uh, Venus title dot diff. So you delete the center. Uh, tags to move the, uh, by default, if you don't have center, it aligns to the left. So now the photo is on the uh, left part of the uh, page, not in the center anymore. So you remove the center tags. Now you rescale it because the photo is too large. You see height and width. Uh, they're in pixels. So if you add these attributes to the uh, image uh, uh, tag, you see uh, you see a smaller photo. Add a horizontal line at the bottom of the page with the uh, uh, break indicating a new line, HR uh, indicating a horizontal rule, horizontal ruler. So, so this is the uh, ruler at the bottom of the page. So add a table to show Venus weekly activities. Uh, so table begin with table tag, end with the slash table tag. And you can also add a border uh, of the table. Rows begin with TR, table row. Data cells begin with TD, table data. So, so here's the uh, Here's the table. This is the Venus uh, Venus schedule. Uh, breakfast, play, sleep, snack, sleep, dinner, play. So that's a good schedule. Uh, so you can see the uh, page source. So table with a border. Otherwise, it's borderless. TR. Table row, the first row has uh, these uh, data, data cells. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is the first row of the table. So this is the, uh, the first row here. Followed by next row, breakfast with red colored font. So that's breakfast. 
Followed by another row, play, and uh, and so on. You have different colors for different rows. So that's how you build a table in HTML. So you can place a header cell, uh, and this header cell can span uh, multiple other cells whose column span equals seven. It, it means that it spans seven cells. So this is the header cell, my weekly schedule, which spans all seven days. Uh, So this is the uh, table header, column span equals 7, uh, it is centered with my weekly schedule, and it will span all the 7 uh, other columns uh, for the other, other uh, rows. So, place a picture frame around Venus photo. So, so this is the picture frame around this photo. How do how you add it? Uh, you say table border equals two, indicating the border is two pixels wide. And with the table with a single row, row and single column. So you are a single row with a single data cell, uh, which means it's a single column with the image file in, uh, as the uh, element of the data cell. So there, as a result, what you get is uh, a single table with a single row, a single column, with a border uh, two pixels wide. This has the effect of placing a picture frame around in this photo. Finally, you can uh, uh, change some, uh, do some finishing touches, and uh, add a third page for Venus best friend. So the finish finished page is this: you have a table with a single row and single column as a picture a picture of Vina with the background color background image. Welcome to Venus homepage have another animated GIF with fire. Bio, self-introduction, favorite activities, and best friend. So these are done a lot, done with uh, another table that are right aligned. Look at the uh, page source here. So the table uh, here is the uh, the stuff on the right hand corner? Uh, you have a, a data cell with the fire GIF, which is the animated GIF for the fire image, and uh, a bunch of other uh, other links. Uh, Vina Bio three with a large font and strong strong that is bold uh, emphasis. Align right, indicating that it aligns to the right. So that's why you see these uh, these things on the right hand of the right hand side of the page. And uh, you have all together one, two, three, four, five lines. So these are the five uh, gift image, bio, self introduction, different activities, and best friends. Here are the five uh, entries in the table. Okay, so that's the basic for HTML. It's uh, pretty simple, so I went over it very fast.
So now let's uh, look at, uh, and also I placed the extra link. Uh, it's an online tutorial for HTML. So you can look through it if you, uh, if you uh, find it useful. So now let's uh, go into CGI. So uh, this uh, HTML, uh, if you write an HTML document by hand with a notepad or a Microsoft Word, you are designing a static web page. But uh, today with CGI, you can design a dynamic web page. That is, web pages that are generated online. Perhaps you can pull data from a database and display it uh, instead of uh, uh, hand coding the page statically. So a CGI program allows the user to interact with the web page by generating HTML code that depends on user input. For example, web pages with the entry form for buttons use a CGI program to get the input from the user and display appropriate results. So Perl is the most popular language for CGI programming because it is good at text manipulation. You can also use other uh, scripting languages uh, like uh, PHP uh, to uh, write CGI programs. Uh, so, so uh, this is actually not accurate. Uh, so CI system considers CGI programs a security risk and does not allow them. Uh, it, they actually allow CGI programs now. I think this is the old statement. But in any case, uh, you, if you're undergrad students, you, you're likely not to have a, a account on the CS uh, system. So if you're using a uh, your uh, these servers like USC STU one and USC STU two, uh, they allow CGI programs. So you should place your CGI programs in a directory called CGI dash bin in your public HTML directory. So you should make a directory with this name under your public HTML directory and place your program uh, within it and, and the URL is home.cgi that uh, USDLIT slash CGI bin slash CGI wrap slash the login name and your program.cgi. So this, this path name is uh, specified by the system administrator. It is hand uh, hard coded by the administrator. So you just uh, follow the uh, uh, follow this path name. This is not set by you. This is set by the administrator. So also you should uh, have execute permission, schmod other plus execute program.cgi. So I found out that you actually should also set uh, yourself user plus execute, u plus x. Otherwise the, uh, the server gives you a strange error. So the safe way is to say schmod 755. It'll uh, add execute permission for uh, both the user and group and the uh, others so that uh, uh, it will guarantee there's no errors. So, so this is the home page of Professor Andrew Horner, Horner uh, at ESC. So the, the uh, URL is home.usc.sk corner uh, and it has a bunch of CGI programs on it. So so this is the HTML source for that home page. You have, this is a static page by the way. Head, body, a uh, bunch of attributes, text color, link color, etc.
a paragraph uh, with the uh, my official homepage with a hyperlink and a bunch of CGI programs. The CGI uh, address is, is this. As I mentioned uh, before, home.cgi, cgi-bin, cgi-wrap, followed by the uh, username and the cgi file name. So this is the Hello World CGI program. So you start with the uh, header indicating it's a per script. It is a script that, that's supposed to generate a uh, HTML document. So it, it's a HTML generator. So this is a very simple script. You just print a bunch of uh, text in between these two uh, delimiters and of, uh, this is the uh, end of multi-line text is this delimiter you say print and show this uh, delimiter so print uh, two uh, angular brackets indicating that to print everything in between uh, until the end of this tag and in between you, you specify HTML and head enclosing a header with a title body with a, with a single uh, with a level one heading hello world so content type colon com, uh, colon text slash HTML with a blank line which is required uh, for this uh, for this uh, syntax. So, so this is the uh, result of that uh, CGI program. So notice the uh, address of this page. This is a dynamically generated uh, home uh, HTML document. So the uh, Source is cgi one.cgi. You can view the source. So, if you view the source, it, it shows you the uh, uh, the actual uh, HTML document. But uh, the actual program is actually a CGI program. So. So it simply prints out this HTML document uh, as, a, as a result of this uh, per, per uh, CGI program. So hello world. So it's a here document. So it starts with the uh, two uh, uh, brackets and the word called the end token. So it is a convenient way to quote a multi-line string. Uh, the string begins on the next line and continues up to a line containing the end token at the start of the line. So they're very useful for generating an HTML. Uh, this token, uh, you can use essentially any, uh, any string. This is just happens to be a, uh, you happen to say end of multi-line text, multi text but any string can be used to indicate the end token. Content type indicates the uh, type of output we are generating. Uh, text slash HTML. It's followed by a blank line which must contain no spaces or tabs. This separates the CGI header from the HTML code. After the blank line comes the HTML uh, text, which is sent to be formatted and displayed on the uh, screen, on the browser. <coughs> so you can uh, test your program from the command line before you test it on the web. So if you uh, run this program directly, 
from the shell, you get this output. So, and uh, if you run it from the uh, from the browser with uh, with the uh, with this uh, address, then you get the uh, browser formatted display. If you run it on the command prompt, you get the raw uh, text display of the HTML source. So using here documents is a very painful way. So you must specify every tag uh, manually, uh, just like uh, printf. So per has the CJ module, which is like a library. Uh, you you say use CGI quote word colon uh, standard. So this in, includes the standard module in your program uh, that allows you to uh, uh, to uh, print out HTML document in a very user friendly way. We'll see next. Use statement is like include in C++. It brings in predefined functions from another file at compile time. So you can use all the functions built within the standard module. If you include the uh, CGI standard module, place it on the top of the page, you can say print header, print start HTML with uh, this uh, title of the document, print heading one, level one heading, print and HTML. So this is a more user friendly way of generating an HTML document. Uh, by having the uh, this module included uh, in the beginning of the uh, Perl script, you can, uh, you can use these keywords, header, star HTML, and HTML. Uh, you don't have to specify the tags uh, explicitly. So this is uh, equivalent, but more user friendly. So CGI module functions, these are functions, return strings, which we can then send to print. So header returns a string containing the uh, content type with a blank line. Uh, star HTML returns uh, this string as an HTML title. And H1 returns a first level heading. And P returns a paragraph. So this is the uh, yeah we don't have a program here so this uh, returns the same document as the here document we saw uh, before just uh, the per program is uh, easier to write. CJ provides widgets for accepting user input in forms. One of the most common widgets is the text field widget, which allows the user to enter the text in the box. Uh, in addition to start SMR, you also need to start form to, be, to add your text field. Uh, so, the uh, text field is often called inside a P function, paragraph function. So, so you say print paragraph, first document, the text field, uh, first argument is the name of the text field, second argument is the default file. So you're creating a text field with name, bill, default value, chief. So paragraph, bill is, this indicates that you have build is string followed by a text field with the name bill and default value sheet. And you have a print start form and print end form surrounding the, uh, uh, the form input. So here's 
the uh, Hello Gates program. So you, you have the standard include module, uh, standard module at the top. So you print header and print a first level heading, Hello Gates Lovers. And view value is this scalar variable that you uh, grab from the form. So param bill. So bill is the name of the text field. Param bill grab the uh, uh, value of the uh, text field. Assigned to bill value. So if bill value is uh, empty, it is uh, bill value has a value that is it's not empty. You print uh, yes bill is what is the bill value. Otherwise, you ask for user input. So you print horizontal row, that is a horizontal line, and then start form and form horizontal line. So within these two horizontal lines, you print build this followed by the text field. And then print HTML. So, so this is the result of that uh, script. You can view the source of the script. Uh, uh, this is the HTML uh, document for that for that. Uh, source for that HTML document, so so uh, paragraph bill is input, type is text, name is bill, value is cheap. So the input keyword in HTML is indicates a uh, input text field. Uh, that is a uh, text you can type stuff into. Enclose this uh, paragraph, and you have a form indicating it's a form that the user can fill in. Method is post, that is, uh, your post uh, allows you to enter stuff and post it to the website that is sent to the server. Uh, so this is the HTML document, which is the result of running the CGI script, running the Perl script. The Perl script is this. So So if you use the standard module here, you don't have to worry about how the uh, how the HTML document uh, looks like. You just uh, uh, issue these, uh, call these functions in the first script, and it will generate uh, the HTML document behind your back. So, first time you run the script, what happens? Uh, you, you display this uh, build list followed by a text box. And you enter something to the box. You click enter. You get another page that says yes, bill is cheap, uh, followed by the uh, string. So let's follow this program. So the first time you run the program, what happens if you uh, if, uh, if you call this line? This line says param bill. Param bill. Bill is this uh, name of the text field. This guy. So because you haven't uh, entered, uh, haven't clicked enter. That is, uh, you haven't uh, filled out the form yet. So param bill is going to return null. 
and build value is going to be no uh, the first time you run the scratch. So, therefore, this if the, if uh, we return false, it will follow the else branch uh, the first time you run the scratch and print out uh, the whole bunch of uh, stuff indicating the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, bill list and text field. Now, if you enter something and click en uh, press enter, uh, you you will send a uh, send the content of the text box text field to the server, and uh, the result is to assign this value to the bill uh, text field. And uh, and then this script is invoked again. The param bill is going to return a non-null value. It's going to return whatever you entered in the text box. The bill value is non-null next time you run it. And uh, so when you come down here, it'll follow the if branch and print yes bill is followed by the bill value string. So uh, you're invoking the script twice. First time it follows the else branch to print uh, to display the text box. Second time it follows the if branch to display the uh, uh, yes bill as something string. So if you uh, refresh it, you can see first time it displays the text box. And the second time, it displays the yes, bill as cheap. Okay. So the test field is initially filled with the default value, cheap. You can modify it or you can leave it uh, as cheap. And uh, hit return, you can get, uh, you get, yes, bill is cheap. If you change the uh, bill field, say nasty, you can uh, get a different display. So now we know how to create simple text fields and respond to them. What about buttons and checkboxes and menus? So that's the next program has all these elements. So use strict, remember that? It uh, forces every variable to be local. We must use my in front of the variable name. Use the uh, standard module, print header, uh, with the title. Bill Gates fans print uh, level one heading, Bill Gates fan page, a param. So param with no argument indicates uh, it's a, a function call to, uh, to see if the form has been fill out, filled out. That is, if any of the uh, parameters is not null, it will return true. So my assign the name parameter to who, assign the bill word parameter to what. So let's look at the else branch first. This is the else branch. That's the first time you invoke the script, the param, uh, the param call with no arguments will return a false uh, because all the parameters are null. So it will follow the else branch. It prints the form, start form, end form. Name, text field name. So name, N-A-M-E is the name of the text field with no default value. You only have single argument. Then the text field will be empty the first time you display it. What is Bill? Pop-up menu. This is the uh, 
goes up at the selection box on the web page. Let's see what it looks like. So your name, a text box with uh, no initial default value, you can type in your name. What is still, you have this uh, selection box with three entries, rich, cheap, and powerful. So uh, cheap, rich, powerful, uh, separated by commas, surrounded by uh, by brackets, and by the uh, brackets. So pop-up menu with the first argument, the field word, is the name of the uh, widget. You can re uh, grab the uh, value later by name, by the field word name, followed by the three entries uh, of the uh, pop-up menu, the, the uh, selection box. Another pop-up menu, money, with four entries. One, ten, a hundred, uh, one thousand. So that's the four entries here. How many billion US dollars uh, does Leo have? And you print submit and reset. So these are the two built-in functions uh, two buttons that should be present on uh, all the uh, HTML forms, all the uh, CGI uh, forms. So this is submit button. If you click the submit button, uh, it will send all the values that you enter to the server. Because if you click on clear button, it will uh, research the form to the initial stage as you will first invoke the script. So uh, send and clear are the uh, text that you specify to display on the button. You can specify anything. So you can say uh, uh, send it or clear it or anything. You can, you can uh, place the label of the buttons. So this uh, bunch of lines displays the uh, initial form. Now, what happens if you uh, if you enter uh, your name, Sam? What is Bill? Say Rich. How many billion dollars? You say ten. You say uh, send. Now, what happens if you click send? It will invoke the script again. This time, the parameters have been filled out. So the if param returns true, you will follow the if branch, not the else branch. So you grab the parameter name, assign it to uh, the variable who. Grab the parameter build word, assign it to what. Grab the parameter money, as assign it to how much. So these are the names of the widgets. Text field name, pop-up menu bill word, and pop-up menu money. So you grab the uh, value you entered on the widgets by the param function followed by the uh, name of the widget. And save these values in the uh, variables, and uh, and test how, if how much is a hundred. You say print a paragraph. Yes. Who? Uh, Bill is what, and he has many many times more money than you. If how much is not a hundred, you say incorrect. Who Bill has U.S. a uh, hundred billion dollars? So, as a result, what happens is that first time you invoke the script, 
you get you, you execute the else branch and display the form and you enter something and you click send you invoke the script again this time you invoke uh, you execute the if branch and display yes uh, ss this string is what you entered in the uh, name box here and a reach is what you enter in the selection box for this fill and uh, he has how many times more money than you so this is controlled by the param uh, with no parameters so this guy returns true if uh, any of the parameters is not null. It returns false if uh, if the form hasn't been filled out. Right? Any questions on this? So uh, why do you have the square brackets around the arrays? They create a reference to an array. So this we didn't really discuss when we discussed per arrays, but uh, uh, but it, it's a reference. So pop-up menu expects the array reference as a second argument. You can also create array reference by using a backslash in front of the named array. So my choices. Uh, add choices indicates that it's an array variable called word in, uh, this has a list of three elements and you uh, you create a pop-up menu with backslash add choices uh, because you cannot simply pass an array you must pass in a reference like a pointer to an array so use backslash or you can use the uh, square brackets to indicate uh, a reference to an array. So initial string, and uh, building the form, you get a uh, result string. So if you enter a uh, hundred, it displays yes, uh, something, something. If you enter uh, any value other than 100, I guess you get another string. So, uh, let's continue. So how do we generate uh, checkboxes and links with your CGI program? So what is your name? It's a text, text field. What is spell? You have a bunch of checkboxes. Good, bad, ugly, rich, famous, handsome. What is Phil's favorite color? So checkboxes allow you to select more than one option. Well, a uh, pop-up menu only allows you to select one. So, so if you click on, uh, this is a mid query. You get uh, this thing below the original form. So. So this is the uh, Perl script. <coughs> so notice that here you don't have the if, else. Therefore, every time you invoke the script, it'll print the form. That's why when you click on submit query, uh, the form is displayed again instead of uh, disappearing like, like what we saw before. Because now, what you have is you print the uh, form 
no matter what. So even be, uh, before and after you submit the query. So print start HTML. A simple example, which is the uh, uh, the header, and with the heading, uh, a simple example. So these two are different, right? So the first uh, star HTML prints. So a simple example is the uh, on the top of the uh, browser uh, here, indicating the the header of the HTML document. The next simple example is the uh, body. Is the uh, level one heading of the HTML document. So, start form and uh, what's your name? Text field name. We saw this before. Uh, P puts a new paragraph, new line. So, what is Bill? New line. Checkbox group. This this is a group of checkboxes. Words is a widget name. You can refer to the value of the uh, widget by param parentheses words. Followed by this uh, list, good, bad, ugly, which surrounded by the uh, square brackets indicating the reference to a list. But another argument with another reference to a list, rich and uh, famous. This is the default value. Uh, these two entries are checked by default, even before you enter the uh, input. Another new line, what is your favorite color? You have pop of menu with the name of the widget as color with three entries. Submit. So last time we saw the uh, submit button with the parameter indicates the label of the submit button. If you omit the label, then you have submit query. This string has the default uh, button name, button label. And form and horizontal row. So the button has submit query as a label. So if param, so the first time you invoke the script, if param is going to return false, so you skip the entire thing. Uh, next time, after you enter all the fields, you get uh, if param is going to return true. So you print uh, the next part. Param name grabs whatever you enter in the main widget, the text field. Uh, M uh, says emphasis generates the uh, EM HTML tag, which had the effect of uh, letting the uh, uh, whatever is enclosed in M uh, to be italics or display. Build this join param words. So this returns a list. A list of values. Join, if you remember, join in Perl joins the list uh, one by one with this delimiter, which happens to be comma, space. And your favorite color is, so as a result, you get name is what you entered in the text box here, fill list. I clicked on good, ugly, rich, famous. So you have good, comma, space, ugly, comma, space, rich, comma, space. This is the result of executing the join. And the favorite color is my green. Finally, you print uh, a uh, A is this uh, function. Uh, within the standard module to indicate the print uh, HTML link. href equal angular bracket. So this is the uh, 
hypertext reference uh, in the uh, HTML uh, link. And uh, this is the uh, link's name. So as a result, you get this, this, is, uh, this line. Finally, you print in HTML. So if you look at the source of the document, you get this is the result of running the uh, executing the CGI script. Uh, it's quite a, it's a long line, so you need to scroll to see the whole thing. Uh, and this uh, document will be different uh, every time you run the uh, submit the uh, different values to the uh, form. So, so uh, it'll say option selected value is money green. Uh, so next, if you select, I select lucky red, and I see the uh, source again, it'll it'll say. Uh, Lucky value is lucky red. So, so anyway, the point is that the HTML document uh, on this page is dynamically generated by the CGI program. Uh, so, depends on user input. You will generate different HTML documents. So, uh, no questions on this one? Another example. Radio button. The radio button uh, forces you to choose one entry only at a time. Uh, unlike uh, the uh, Unlike the previous example, so select one option only. So uh, if you uh, select something, how many billion dollars? See, I'm not my real name. I'll transfer the bill's account for your piece of bill. So you get the current settings of this place. So let's look at the uh, the source, uh, the uh, per program. So notice here, uh, you have if not param. So this is the initial screen. Else you do work, you uh, display the result. So this is different from the uh, previous example in that. Uh, you display the initial screen initially, and when you enter the uh, input, next time you display only the, only the result, not the initial screen. Because you have the if else uh, switch here. And these two are subroutine function calls we learned before in Perl. Sub, print prompt, so uh, you print a text field, we saw this checkbox. Uh, we it's another uh, another widget. How many billion dollars does the bill have? Radio group. This is the keyword for for generating a list of radio buttons with these entries. Not enough, one, ten. How much is the uh, name of the widget? Name of the radio group. Uh, hidden text. Uh, this secret is the uh, name of the widget hidden text. 
with this hidden string. So this is the uh, this is not shown on the web page, but it's uh, it's there. If you want to grab the value of the hidden text, you can uh, say param secret. It'll grab the string Bill Gates owns Netscape. So it, it is useful for for uh, you to uh, keep something that you want to refer to later, but you don't want to display it uh, actually on the user interface. Scrolling list. So this displays this thing. So this is a scrolling list. You can scroll uh, up and down with uh, this many entries. Seatbelt, seatbelts, auto transfer to build bank account, craft button, invisible icons, fill disk function, simulate power search, seatbelts. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six entries uh, in the scrolling list. Another argument is uh, three. Three is the number of items displayed initially. So you display three items. So the uh, this widget is large enough to show three items initially. Seatbelts is the uh, argument indicating the default value. So the seatbelts is initially selected by default. And what do you think of Bill? Text area. So text area is different from text box uh, in that you can input multi-line text. Well, text box only text field only allows you to input a single line. So name of the widget comments, initial value is no, it's not, uh, there's no initial string. Three is three rows and 50 uh, characters per row. The size, uh, three by 50 is the size of the text area. Finally, you say submit with the uh, name of the uh, widget is action and the label is go. Reset, reset, you don't have the argument, so it is have the default label, which is reset. Well, the uh, the submit button has the label go because you explicitly specify go as the uh, label, as the second argument. So this is the uh, form. Now, do work. This is what happens after you click on uh, go. So this is the uh, so what you do is you you do a for each param. So param returns uh, the uh, all the parameters uh, you enter on the uh, web page in the uh, in the hash structure. Remember per hashes? The hash has the widget names as keys and widget values as values. Key value pairs. So for each uh, for each uh, key in the uh, hash data structure, you print the key strong indicating uh, emphasis bold and uh, print the values. The values, there may be uh, more than a single value, especially uh, you have the, uh, uh, you have uh, 
multiple inputs. So you do a join to join all the uh, list of values into a single string, and finally print out a brick, uh, a new line. So. Uh, so finally, this is a print out the end, uh, end of the uh, page with the uh, link. And uh, here, document for a link. And address is this HTML tag for uh, addresses. So it displays typically as a tag on, on the web page. So, so if you click on go, it'll grab every single parameter uh, that you entered on the uh, previous page, name, as Sam, not my real name, as on or off. So not my real name is this uh, checkbox, either on or off, depending on if you check it or not. How much is 10 secret is Bill Gates owns Netscape. So this is not displayed in the uh, web page because it's hidden. But it, you can refer to the parameter uh, in your program. So features, seatbelts, and action, so, so action is this uh, uh, name of the Go widget, Go button. Button itself is a widget. And uh, the value is this label, Go. Notice that you don't have the, you don't display the reset in the uh, settings uh, form because you didn't give it a, uh, <coughs> a name. So you had a uh, action Go as the uh, action, as the widget name, go as the uh, value. A reset, you don't have the name and value. Therefore, it's, you don't have uh, a parameter for it in the uh, result. So uh, you need head uh, to indicate uh, uh, you should enclose the title within the head uh, tags. Head, title, and then head. And uh, need body surrounding the uh, body of the HTML. And also the uh, next the, the ending tag always has a forward slash. You missed the forward slash here in the ending HTML tag. So HTML, head is this, and body is this.
So, uh, look at this one. What is wrong with this program? So first, you miss the uh, UCGI standard. Only if you include this this line can you use this function. Star HTML, H1, param. All these are functions defined in the standard module. Otherwise, you can only do the here document. You can only print out uh, verbatim the HTML document. You cannot use these functions. And you you should print a header. Header prints out the uh, file type col colon text slash HTML to indicate it's an HTML document. If param prints, yes, build is param something. So this is uh, wrong. So if the parameters are set, you print some, yes, build is something. Otherwise, you display the form. And also, you should assign the param uh, bill to the bill value uh, variable before you use it. Print yes, bill is bill value. You shouldn't, you cannot do yes, bill is param bill. This doesn't work. So if you do this, uh, the uh, you'll get a uh, mysterious error says, uh, internal server error, so which is very, uh, very uh, undescriptive. By the way, if you get errors uh, when you're testing your script uh, on the web page, you often get this uh, single error message which doesn't tell you what error it is, but if you run it on the command prompt in Unix, uh, it often tells you which line, which error it is. So it is useful to uh, debug your script on the command prompt first before you try it on the web page. So uh, So here, uh, text field, name is bill, value is cheap. So in, in the slides, we saw that you can omit dash name arrow and dash value error. Uh, but you can also uh, uh, place uh, these to make it more clear. So that the name of the widget is bill, the value of the widget, the default value is cheap. So this is the correct uh, So this is the uh, this is a per program uh, not uh, CGI this is just a per program so if user if system grab too exciting uh, so you are looking for two exciting string in the file one and put the result into the file two. What's wrong with this program? First of all, uh, this should be uh, greater than to indicate you are writing to file two. Second, 
it should say if system grab something. So remember, system returns zero if it if if the command is successful. Returns a non-zero if it if it fails. This is uh, in contrast to re regular poor commands, which returns non-zero if successful, zero zero if unsuccessful. Therefore, if you invoke a system call, you should say if system, and then if it goes into the if, it, 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 it indicates failure, and say you say die, and not open file. So it shouldn't be if not system, not system returns uh, true if, if it's a su successful. So. And also you should use backquotes to escape the uh, uh, backslash to escape the two quotes here because these are quotes inside of the quotes, outer quotes. So you should uh, escape these two. So the correct is this. If system grab string field greater than file two, die, not open file one. It's supposed to print hi Bill and uh, hi Tom. Uh, place it to the printer in lab two on separate pieces of paper. So, what is wrong with this? bar in front of RPR because your well, vertical bar is a pipe command. It uh, redirects the output of the previous command to the input of the next command. So this indicates that whatever you uh, play, print to the uh, place to the print file handle, you're going to pipe it to the RPR command. And uh, there's no comma in, uh, in the print. So print file handle and string name. You don't have to have, you don't, you don't have a comma. <laughs> so it should be uh, for each. You're missing, a, there should be a vertical bar, L, LPR, uh, and then print and close print. So this sends the uh, high name string to the uh, LPR command, prints out each one. So each name is sent out as a separate print job. Therefore, each name is printed on a separate page of paper. You have, in this case, you have Three names, Bill, Tom, and Jerry. Therefore, you'll, you'll send out uh, three commands to the LPR.
a larger CGI program So I will put this program online. So let me show you what it does. So what it does is that you have a database It's a text file, text document. With uh, uh, two lines, uh, ID, name, and uh, and uh, label. So uh, and phone number. So if you uh, Click on query. If you input nothing, it will display the uh, entire content of the file in the table. If you uh, input a name, say apricot, it will grab the uh, entry that matches the name. It will only display the apricot name. So you can update the. Uh, so you can say apricot three uh, three. You can say update. Now it will update the uh, text file uh, on the server. So this is actually an exam question in the previous uh, in the many in the previous test. So this is the uh, CGI program. Uh, it's a little bit long. It, uh, so I'll leave this uh, for you to look at after you get back, and I'll, I'll explain it next time in the next class. So you can try to figure it out yourself. I'll put the link to this file online, so you can. Uh, can uh, Try it out and see if you can understand it or not. Okay, uh, that's it. See you next time.